Hello friends, welcome to a new series that I've done on the cholinergic system. In this series of videos, I'm going to discuss the essential nutrient that is choline. Uh, choline's role in the brain, in illness and depression, as well as the three ways that we can manipulate the cholinergic system, which is specifically through the inhibition of acetylcholinesterase, or cholinesterases in, in general, as well as the agonizing of muscarinic cholinergic receptors and nicotinic cholinergic receptors. Now this series is inspired by a blog post that I'm, well not a blog post, a series of blog posts that I'm going to make shortly which will accompany each of these videos. In the video down below in the description you'll find a link to the respective blog post that, um, that I've written about the topic. Essentially, I've written a 15,000 word, 25 page uh, uh, article, a literature review, reviewing the history of the study of choline as it relates to brain function. Um, there are many neurotransmitters in the brain, uh, better known ones are dopamine and serotonin. Uh, serotonin has a serotonergic neurons, dopamine has dopaminergic neurons. There's an, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which is much less well understood and less well known in the public, uh, to the layman at least. And my purpose in writing this uh, literature review, which is very exhaustive with over 200 citations, uh, is to provide the reader, the layman reader, with the functional and uh, the useful knowledge about the cholinergic system that can impact a person's attempt to enhance their own cognition. And indeed, the cholinergic system is very important to cognition and manipulating it can really yield improvements in our attention, particularly in our attention. So instead of posting a very long blog post in one go, I'm going to segment the longer piece into shorter blog posts and make these short videos that should be easy to understand and devoid of uh, biochemical uh, jargon uh, that a listener, a lay listener can, uh, or lay viewer can watch these videos and then if they want more information or to find citations, they can visit my blog at leoandlongevity.com. Again, the link will be below and you can read more about the details of, Coley, of uh, the study of choline. So to begin with, uh, this first short video will introduce the, how, how choline came to be known as an essential nutrient. But before then, let me remind you guys of where you may have heard of choline before. So first of all, uh, the main, if you're interested in genetics or if you're interested in cognitive enhancement, you've probably heard of choline. In terms of genetics, there's a group of genes that people call the methylation genes. Um, among them are the MTHFR gene that's very well known, the PEMT gene, the COMT gene, um, and several others that I've listed in, uh, in my article. These genes affect how much people, they affect people's demand and ability to produce choline. And what ends up happening is that we find that people have some of the largest nutritional variations in their requirements in choline. You know, all of us sort of need similar amounts of most nutrients, but there are some that have widely varying needs. And choline is one of them because of these methylation genes, which respectively, although I'll discuss this more later, respectively either inhibit, lower our ability to produce choline or increase our demand on choline. Secondly, if you're interested in cognitive enhancement, you'll find that choline is quite, uh, it's quite, it's found across the cognitive enhancement communities. For example, on the subreddit, on uh, new, the nootropic sub subreddit, you'll frequently uh, come across choline. And in what variety will you come across it? It'll be called L-alpha-glycerol phosphorylcholine, which is alpha-GPC. Alpha-GPC is an acronym. The G is glycerol, uh, the P is phosphoryl, and the C is choline. So alpha-GPC is a commonly used supplement among uh, people in the nootropicus community to enhance their cognition. And this is really just a, an easily digestible form of cho choline that's a precursor to the form of choline found in the brain called acetylcholine. So if you're interested in genetics or cognitive enhancement, you've probably heard of choline before. But let's discuss how choline became known as, a, as an essential micronutrient. So there's a, uh, a doctor in Chicago who does research with the University of Chicago. His name is Alan Bookman. 
Alan Bookman, and I think I'm pronouncing his name, name right, it might be Alan Bukeman. But anyway, Alan Bookman um, specializes in gastrointestinal uh, diseases. Uh, but in the early 90s, uh, Alan Bookman produced a few papers in which he described his patients that were receiving total parenteral nutrition. Um, they were finding that total parenteral nutrition is when some, they replace, they give you basically IV nutrition so that the nutrition you're getting, the food, because you can't digest it, so it's, it's, it's going around your uh, digestive system, going directly into your blood. So what they found is when they were giving people TPN, um, they were developing um, a form of liver disease called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. If you guys will remember from my uh, NAFLD videos, um, liver disease is a progressive disease. It begins with uh, something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is NAFLD. NAFLD is uh, very common in the world. It affects about 25% of the world's population and up to 30% or more in some uh, regions that are particularly genetically predisposed to getting fatty livers, like South America and the Middle East. But um, anyway, NAFLD affects a great amount of the world population. NAFLD occurs when uh, the liver gains fat in its hepatocytes. After a while, this, flat gets, this fat gets inflamed, which leads to what's called steatohepatitis. That's NASH. What Alan Bookman was, this, was uh, observing among his uh, TPN patients was that they widely had NASH. And he discovered uh, when he added in choline that within in choline into their IV uh, nutrition, that within four weeks their NASH would completely disappear, which uh, revealed that there was a nutritional component to the NASH disease that was forming with the TPN patients. Uh, he later found out that if he took the choline back out of their nutrition, they would again, uh, well, a segment of them would again develop NASH within 10 weeks. Uh, later on, uh, in placebo-controlled trials, it was shown that even healthy people could develop NASH within several weeks if they were on a choline-deficient diet. Um, so what this revealed was this. You see, the study of nutrition began in the, in the mid to late 1800s. Originally, it began with the study of calories, and then with macronutrients. But in the early 1900s, the study of micronutrients uh, became widespread because of what's called deficiency diseases. So for example, Burberry is a disease that is a deficiency of vitamin B1. Scurvy is a disease that's a, a deficiency of vitamin C. Um, rickets is a disease that's a deficiency of vitamin D. In general, things came to be called vitamins, which was a term introduced by a man named Kazimierz Funk, who was a Polish scientist, a well-traveled Polish scientist. Uh, vitamin, by the way, comes from the word vital amine. Amine being like a, an, amine is, an amino acid, for example, is an amine. In fact, though, not all vitamins are amines, which is why the word was uh, modified to become vitamin. Anyway, the, the vitamins were introduced as micronutrients that are carbon-based, meaning that when the uh, food is... See, minerals are something that when food is burnt to determine their calories, you still find the minerals because they don't burn. They're not carbon-based. Micronutrients like vitamins are uh, carbon-based, and so when you burn them, they go away. They're found in very small amounts in food. That's why they're called micronutrients. That's the only reason. And the reason that some things were called vitamins was because without them, we would develop a deficiency disease. So in 1998, the American Institute of Medicine uh, announced that uh, choline was an essential nutrient. Now, some people have called it a, a vitamin. It hasn't really caught on. And we'll get into the reason why in a later episode. But the question is, why did people realize that choline was a vital nutrient so late? <music>